You gotta listen to this boy. You do it now with a bit of passion, just like you have. One, two, three, Emmanuel! In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and, and the Word was God. He is Jesus Christ in every book of the Bible. In Genesis, Jesus Christ is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he's the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he's our high priest. In Numbers, he's the pillar of cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. In Deuteronomy, he's the prophet like unto Moses. In Joshua, he's the captain of our salvation. In Judges, he's our judge and lawgiver. In Ruth, he's our kinsman redeemer. In First and Second Samuel, he's our trusted prophet. In Kings and Chronicles, he's our reign king in Ezra and Nehemiah he's rebuilder of the broken down walls of human life in Esther he's our Mordecai in Job he's our ever living redeemer in Psalms he's our shepherd in Proverbs and Ecclesiastes he's our wisdom in Song of Solomon he's our loving bridegroom in Isaiah he's the Prince of Peace in Jeremiah he's our righteous branch in Lamentations he's our weeping prophet in Ezekiel he's wonderful for face Man. In Daniel, he's the fourth man in life's fiery furnace. In Hosea, he's the faithful husband, forever married to the backslider. In Joel, he's the baptizer of the Holy Ghost and fire. In Amos, he's our burden bearer. In Obadiah, he's mighty to save. In Jonah, he's our great foreign missionary. In Micah, he's the messenger of beautiful feet. In Nahum, he's our strength and shield. In Habakkuk, he's God's evangelist crying. Revive thou works in the midst of the earth. In Zephaniah, he's our savior. In Haggai, he's the store of God's lost heritage. In Zechariah, he's the fountain opened up in the house of David for sin and uncleanliness. And in Malachi, he's the son of righteousness, rising with healing in his wings. In Matthew, he's the king of the Jews. In Mark, he's the servant. In Luke, he's the son of man, feeling what you feel. In John, he's the son of God. In Acts, he's the savior of the world. In Romans, he's the righteousness of God. In 1 Corinthians, he's rock, the father of Israel. In 2 Corinthians, he's the triumphant one, giving victory. In Galatians, he's your liberty. He set you free. In Ephesians, he's the head of the church. In Philippians, he's your joy. In Colossians, he's your completeness. In First and Second Thessalonians, he's your hope. In First Timothy, he's your faith. In Second Timothy, he's your stability. In Titus, he's truth. In Philemon, he's your benefactor. In Hebrews, he's your perfection. In James, he's the power behind your faith. In First Peter, he's your example. In Second Peter, he's your purity. In First John, he's your life. In Second John, he's your pattern. In Third John, he's your motivation. In Jude, he's foundation of your faith. And in Revelation, he is your coming king. <laughs> Off you go, Manuel. He's the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He's the keeper of creation and the creator of all. He's the architect of the universe and the manager of all times. He always was, he always is, and he always will be. Unmoved, unchanged, unfeated, and never undone. He was bruised and brought healing. He was pierced in his pain. He was persecuted and brought freedom. He was dead and brought life. He is risen and brings power. He reigns and brings peace. The world can't understand him. The armies can't defeat him. Schools can't explain him and the leaders can't ignore him. Herod can't kill him. The Pharisees can't confuse him. People can't hold him. Nero can't crush him. Hitler can silence him. The New Age cannot replace him. And Oprah can't explain him away. He's love, love, longevity and more. He's goodness, kindness, gentleness in God. He's holy, righteous, mighty, powerful, pure. His ways are right and his words eternal. His will is unchanging and his mind is on me. He's my redeemer. He's my savior. He's my guide. He's my peace. He's my joy. He's my comfort. He's my Lord and he rules my life. Just 
for one second, think of what led up to this. This is a family who are intentional about raising their children with a real faith. Your sons and daughters, our sons and daughters, will never believe in Jesus Christ unless we as parents take it seriously and we are intentional about being part of a church community and we're intentional about our children being raised in the fear and in the love of God. So we see our young people grow up with a strong faith, not illiterate spiritually, but with a passion in their souls. How about one more round of applause for the mum and dad?